is gone And I've been stuck in all your apologies Gave my all but you want it all from me Keep your love, it doesn't feel the same I hope it hurts you when you hear in my name As we go on, we go on, like we do, like we do. When it's hot outside, hot outside. I wanna just chill with you, chill with you. What you need, what you need, put your little mind at ease, mind at ease. There's a little sunshine in the summer breeze. Oh. Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. We've got a good one on tap today, and there's going to be two quarterbacks ready to get it done on the gridiron. It's Breeze's Saints going up against Carson Wentz's Eagles. Thank you, Larry. It's the NFL on EA Sports as you take a look live there at Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia, PA. Just a short time ago, these Philly fans in full roar as both teams made their way out of the tunnel. Pyrotechnics ablaze. They're set to go as their Eagles will match up with Drew Brees and the New Orleans Saints. They'll run for the first time with Mark Ingram. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Give them 12 yards on that one. It earns them a fresh set of downs. That O-line, they cleared a big hole there on that run. The athleticism of offensive lines continues to evolve, and we're seeing it here. Not only they're controlling things right at the line of scrimmage, but they're able to get upfield to get to what we call the second and the third levels. You know, get to linebacker spot, the secondary spot, getting all the way downfield with their blocking, which helps keep the running back clean. They'll try to continue that trend here this afternoon. And he stopped immediately there. No gain on the play there. Second down. So nothing there, but maybe you blame that on the blocking. Yeah, at some point, you've got to win at the point of attack. And on that play, that was all the defense. They made it happen. On second down, here's Breeze. Oh, look at Thomas wide open. And he's finally taken down, but not before getting across midfield and across the 45-yard line. A good pick up there of 20 yards. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. This is Ingram on first and 10. And he'll be brought down at about the 42. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Nice job by that defensive front there to hold him to a short gain on first down. Well played, I must say. Yeah, only getting one yard. There was no room to run. Now Breeze throwing on second down. And that one got tipped, kind of threw everything off. It brings up third. You used to have a coach used to tell us all the time, those scouting reports aren't just to use up paper, guys. Well, nowadays, you know, we're watching a computer screen, right? They scouted this team very well. Know that they like to use the running backs in the passing game. They covered that play successfully. Now Breeze on third down. The throw to the left side caught by Coleman. Call it a gain of 10, and they pick up the first. Nice job keeping that opening drive alive, and they're in plus territory, that part of the field where you really want to convert on third down, they did. Big time pickup for them, and now, I think the aggressive play callers think to themselves, this part of the field, I take my shot at the end zone, because the closer you get to the end zone, the field can, gets condensed. It makes it a lot tougher to run those routes. And I think the ball's out, but this will get out of bounds, so possession will stay the same. And I have to admit, partner, that I've often thought that I don't like this rule where the offensive player fumbles the ball, it goes out of bounds, 
and they get to keep it. <laughs> that's just because you're a defensive guy. That's why you don't like it. Yeah, you're right. It is a slanted view, isn't it? But that's this is where, for the offensive team, the sideline is their friend. Usually it's not their friend. Yeah, exactly right. I actually played for a guy in college. You know what he used to name the sideline? Sammy. Sammy sideline and use him well. And this will be play number eight of the opening drive. It's third and short. Bree's going to throw. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. This team is not going to make it easy for you. They're a physical group, and we just saw it there on that play. He came in, made the contact, just as he's trying to haul it in. And Lutz puts this one through. And the Saints are going to take a 3 nothing lead. So our initial drive here this afternoon results in three. I'm not sure that was a statement necessarily, but getting points on the road, never a bad thing. No question about it, Brandon. You had a crowd that was all fired up during pregame introductions, yet you're able to quiet them just a little bit by taking the early lead. Then he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. Wentz now on first down. And his first pass here is going to fall incomplete. So he can't hang on, and as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard, maybe from you, I don't know, but you're going to get hit anyways, might as well hold on to the ball. All right, you know a coach <laughs> said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player. Not a chance at all. Way easier said than done. Eluding the pressure right. And seeing nowhere to throw, he chucks this one away from harm. Incomplete. Now it's third down. What's the old adage? Be quick, but don't hurry. Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. <laughs> that ball had to be getting rid of. Otherwise, he was going to get sacked. Now Wentz on third down. Flush to his right. And incomplete. He had nowhere to throw, so he just tossed it away. But that brings up fourth. I don't know, he had to be pretty quick with his fingers to start and stop after the ball hit the ground. I'm giving him some credit. Well, I'm thinking about the mental focus, you know? Yeah. The mental focus. Yeah, the that's got to stay with it. That's true. Here is the putter Jones as he gets this one away. Now it's Ginn. We'll call that a punt of 54 yards. Well struck. And the Saints will take over with a first down and 10. I want to give a hat tip real quick, Charles, to J.J. Watt before the possession switches here. Walter Payton, NFL Man of the Year, and they totaled up how much he helped raise for hurricane relief, $37 million. Incredible. Hurricane Harvey, which really hit the Houston area in a big way, and his original goal was $200,000. So <laughs> congratulations to J.J. Watt and all the people who participated. And Greg Olson of the Panthers, Benjamin Watson of the Ravens, both tight ends, also nominated and finalists for the most prestigious award as determined by the NFL, the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award. Breeze to throw on second down. Looking left side, and he's got a man. It's Coleman, and he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. They'll try to run for the first with Ingram, and he will have a first down here at about the 40. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. Just about every coach we talk to says the crowd shouldn't affect us. That shouldn't be an issue. And then the next breath, they talk about taking the crowd and taking them out of the game by picking up first downs and keeping them at bay. I think we just saw an example of that there, didn't we? Important to do, especially early in the game like they have. Caught on the left side by Ginn. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. It's Saints football to begin quarter number two. They've got a second down at five here to start things out. Go, 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 go. 
From the gun, it's Breeze. And avoids the contact by sliding. Eight yards that time, able to take off, and the result is a first down. Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. Now a first down carry. It's Kamara. And he's going to get this one down near the 45-yard line. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. Well, he was looking for some running room, and there wasn't a whole lot of it there on that play. I think he was lucky to get a couple yards out of it because those defenders, they were rallying to the football pretty quickly. Shotgun now for Breeze. Well, this is caught by Gann. And he's going to be out of bounds down around the 35-yard line. Breeze to another longtime vet, Ginn, for the New Orleans first. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. Kill, 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 kill. Breeze hands to Ingram. And, oh, a good hit there and knocked down hard near the 34-yard line. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. The best defensive linemen, they play with great leverage so they can get low and not get bowled over by offensive linemen. They have excellent hands. They can throw people off on them. Eagle pressure too much this time. Down he goes. Fletcher Cox. Never giving up, he's able to keep working and get him for a loss of 12. Third and long now after the sack of Breeze and the Saints up against it here. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. He's going to look deep down, looking for Ginn, and it's intercepted. Breeze picked off by his former teammate, Malcolm Jenkins. And a great return as he's up close to the 40-yard line. CD, I want to get your thoughts on some potential free agents this offseason before we change the possession here. Now, caution, many of these guys could be resigned, I know, but who are some of them? Kirk Cousins is one. Yeah, we're talking about difference makers. Kirk Cousins at the quarterback position. He's going to be coveted around the league for by quarterback needy teams. Case Keenum had a big year. Could he move? But how about running backs? Le'Veon Bell, Deion Lewis, some pass catchers. Jimmy Graham, Jarvis Landry, Sammy Watkins. And about the guy who goes and gets quarterbacks, DeMarcus Lawrence had a monster year for Dallas last season. Yeah, a lot of big names that could be out there as free agents. Now it's the Boise State alum, Jay Ajayi. And he'll muscle his way up to the 43 for a pickup of right around five. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. Sproles, just a gain of two there, and it's going to bring up a fourth down. Another down on the scoreboard, but the urge to go for it is almost irresistible here on fourth and short. Yeah, I know. I know they're on their own side of the uh, field. I was going to say. Normally, I would say punt the ball away, but I'm feeling it. I say go for it. And now before this fourth and two play comes to fruition, they're going to think about it and call a timeout. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this second quarter. And how about the call here? They need two yards in their own territory on fourth down, and they're going to go for it. They do go for it. It's Wentz. The open man is Smith. And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. A minute 59 to go in the first half. We'll come back to Philadelphia after this. They go play action here on first down, escaping the pressure right. And seeing no options, he just tosses this one away incomplete. Now that'll bring up second down. The one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown them a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after them. They've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept them on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. Burtz has it left side. 
Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. Again, they'll throw with Wentz. Out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. And he is out of bounds, but not before taking this down to the eight. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. After that nice game there for the rest of the game, the defense is going to have to respect the running backs as passing threats as well. Not just play them strictly to run the football. They may be able to get downfield and catch it, too. And the D looking like they may blitz. Wins to throw again. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. And a good display of footwork will only get him just inside the five to the four. Nice job defensively to hold him to four. And now it's second and goal. is up and good to make it 7-3. Elliott now to kick this one away. And no return on this one as the fair catch is signaled for and take it. New Orleans offense working its way back out there. As we look at them ahead to 2018, as that wound at the end of 2017 continues to heal, Charles, they're going to have Kamara, Ingram, Thomas. If they have Breeze back at quarterback, this should be an excellent squad again. It certainly should. And frankly, if the offensive line comes back healthy and intact, that's another big win for them, especially with their two tackles, Teron Armstead at left tackle, Brian Ramchick, who was a rookie last season at right tackle. They are loaded going forward. If they could get a real playmaker at tight end, that might be the last piece. And if that happens, I'd hate to be a defensive coordinator trying to game plan for them. On second down, Ingram. And this time he's not going anywhere. They'll get him down right at the line of scrimmage. Not enough there for a first. No gain, as a matter of fact. And it leaves them at third and one. The Saints on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. They're up against a third and one situation. They run. It's Mark Ingram. And the Eagles are going to go ahead and take another timeout. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. Keep this one away from Sproles as this is angled toward the sideline. And it's out of bounds. Now we'll see what the side judge says. He says out at the eight-yard line. Eagles will take over here in just a second on offense. And Charles, as you look back to the Super Bowl title run that they just had, what were some of the moves that made that possible? I'll keep it on the offensive side of the ball because I thought their front office did a fantastic job of having answers in case things happen. Carson Wentz goes out. Well, they had signed Nick Foles to back him up. That worked out pretty well. <laughs> Getting Alshon Jeffrey as a weapon outside to help them in the passing game. Darren Sproles gets hurt at running back. Corey Clement was signed as an undrafted free agent. He filled in well, and they traded for Jay Ajayi. And how about Jason Peters losing the all-world left tackle? And Halapula Vate Vaitai, who they drafted the year before, filled in quite capably. They had answers for everything they needed. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. Out come the Eagles now as they'll go on offense first here in the third quarter. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking to extend that lead. 
And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers, or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half, and they've had ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt. <laughs> show them one thing, hit them with something else. Wentz now on first down. Dancing to his left. And he'll avoid the tackle there with a slide. He'll get five out of the scramble. It's second down. Now how about that play? He took a possible negative and turned it into positive yardage and slid down to avoid taking a big shot. Excellent job getting down and avoiding the big hit. Here's Wentz to throw. It's caught on the right side at Smith. Torrey Smith, 57 yards. And the Eagles had six to their lead. As a former DB, you might not like to see that, but from a wide receiver's perspective, those are the plays they dream of. Correct on both counts, all right? Because once he took off, I mean, let's face it, that should have been done in big sky country. Aren't any speed limits out there? And off he went. Glad I wasn't the one trying to chase him. And the decision to come out is going to cost him five as he's taken down right at the 20. Now the attention turns to the Saints offense getting ready for their first possession of the second half. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone, you know, not even put points on the board. They got just... And now this is intercepted. My goodness. Picked off here the 32. And he is going to get this one back to the 20-yard line. That interception sets them up beautifully already in the red zone. And you can hear it all the way up here. Oski, Oski, everyone turn to block, find a spot, and now they're set up inside the red zone for their offense. So after the INT, here's Wentz. This will be caught inside the 10. And he goes out of bounds inside the 10 at the 9. It's a good gain of 11. Sets him up first and goal. Now a play fake here on first down. Forced out to his left. And here he'll get it down to the 7. Give him a couple on the scramble. It's second down. How about a tip of the cap to the defense? They're working against a very mobile quarterback, but all day long they've kept him under wraps. And on that play, they held him to a short gain. Shift together here from the D-line. Snap coming at one. Now wins. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. Brandon, some of those windows that throw the football that exist when you're between the 20s, they don't exist when you're this close to the goal line. But as a former DB, I liked it closer to the goal line. Tighter windows made it easier to cover people, actually. Wentz now on third and goal. And he's going to go down. Sacked back at the 13-yard line. Bantai tail in there to drop him for a six-yard loss, and that'll lead to a fourth down. And Sturgis able to knock it through, and they will stretch the lead now to 17-3. to So three points is the outcome, but probably not what they're looking for given the drive that they were on. Yeah, things were looking good. You had it first and goal, but then the offense sputters a bit, and they're forced to settle for a field goal. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. And now the Saints get set to trot out there. And last time wasn't pretty. One play and an interception. We'll see if they can do better. I want to see if they want to go ahead and throw the ball again now on this drive after what happened on the last one. Throw it on the first play. Give the quarterback some confidence. See what happens. Oh, and now he bowls him over. And they're able to get this one across the 35. They give him 14 yards that time and a fresh set of downs. 
I'm okay with the call there. In fact, I actually like it. I know they're down a couple of scores, but the running game worked in that situation. I would continue to go in that direction. He gets it to Thomas. Room to run past midfield. And all the way down to the 22-yard line. A big-time play there for New Orleans. 41 yards. Breeze leaves this one with Kamara. Looking for a cutback lane, but nothing there as he's met at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Breeze now. He'll buy some time right. That's out to Hill. Right side complete. And they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. He's been quiet today in the passing game, just his second catch. Yeah, and people have to come up with schemes to limit him. And, and what a lot of teams do, they'll double him, you know, use a linebacker underneath, a safety over the top. Sometimes they'll just take a corner, maybe their third corner if he's a bigger guy, and put him on a man-to-man -man to try and limit his touches. Just keep mixing it up, give him different angles, different looks, like a good boxer does. Try to pound it in, Kamara. And he maneuvers his way down to the three-yard line. A nice pickup of six there to get him closer to the end zone, and it'll be second and goal. And now the Eagles going to signal for a timeout. It's just their first, so two remaining as they burn one here in this third quarter. They'll run it with Kamara. They're able to get a couple here, but won't get across the plane as they stop him right around the one. Sometimes I get caught in hyperbole, but I think they desperately need to punch this one in. They're running out of time. Yeah, two-score game, second half. You're down here. This is the time to put it in the end zone. And not going to get much better than this for an opportunity. They got to have six here. It's third and goal. They'll look to run with England and not going to be able to push this forward. He runs into a wall right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play and what to do now on fourth and goal. The field goal doesn't help. They're going to go for the six here on fourth and goal. They'll run for it. It's Ingram. And he's not going to get there. Might have even lost a yard. Ingram denied on fourth and goal. And this Eagle defense stands tall down near the goal line. And not great starting field position here for the offense. Now, whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. That's going to leave them with just one remaining here in this fourth quarter. And tough starting field position here. In his own end zone, it's Wentz. It's caught, Smith. And he's able to get this up just shy of the 15. Trying to find some space to operate, and now they'll have it. A gain of 12, a big first down to get away from the end zone. They'll run it now, and he'll be taken down at the 18. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Now, I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. Wentz can pull it down when he needs to, and the 6'5 quarterback picks up the first down. Well, he did a nice job keeping his eyes downfield, waiting for someone to get open. But once the pressure forced his eyes down to see the rush, it was time to make a break for it. They'll run it now out of the gun. Slipped one tackle, but no more as he's knocked to the deck behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Brandon, this is clearly a running situation when you're up in the fourth quarter. 
they're going to have to stack the box and make it difficult for them to move the ball. Made it very difficult right there. Now they need to repeat that effort. Yeah, bring seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take to slow him down. Now wins. Buying time to his left. Looking left sideline, but it's incomplete. I know we're doing this game live, but let's, let's step into the film room.